What's going on guys, it's your average consumer and Tesla has recently put out one of their biggest software updates to all of their cars. They put out version 10, which includes some really awesome features like finally adding Spotify and being able to control your music, the ability to play more games like even Cuphead, even Netflix and Hulu when the car is parked. But one of the biggest features is Smart Summon. Basically what Smart Summon is, is if you aren't close to your car and you want it to come to you, you can just use the app and it'll find its way right over to you. It uses the sensors and the cameras around the car to know what it's around and kind of avoid any traffic on its way to you. So very interesting stuff. We got to try it out though. We got to see what it's like in the real world. So we are going to be putting this baby to the test. Now it's actually really easy to access the smart summon feature on the app. Once you jump into it, you'll see a button that says, come to me. It will detect your location and it'll even give you a little ring to how far you can go out that your car will drive to you. So it's all really interesting stuff, but I know you guys want to see it in action. So let's do that. The car is all the way over there. You might be able to see it. I'm going to hit the come to me button and let's see what it does. Lights on. All right. So you have to actually hold down the button to have it work. Did it stop? Okay. So interesting. It's saying summon is not available on public roads. So I guess a street like this is not where you're going to be able to summon. I guess since this is where regular everyday people drive, it's not like a secluded area like a parking lot. So it's not going to work here. Okay, so a public road didn't work. So places near houses, that kind of stuff, ain't going to cut it. Now we've got it in a parking lot. And this would be one of the scenarios that even Tesla has shown that the car is going to be able to be summoned from. So. Let's give that a try. I'm going to leave this guy behind. OK, guys, so now we're going to do it. We are going to go and hit come to me. So let's see how this works. I see those lights coming on. All right. All right. It's pulling out. It's pulling out. OK. All right. No driver in that thing. Where are you going? OK. You going to correct yourself? Uh, no, that is not cool. So let's take a look here. So the fact that it really crossed all of these lines here and it was, it looked like it was going straight. I didn't see the wheels turn. It's a little cause for concern. I'm wondering if it, there, there were actual cars here, would it detect that? But I would think that the sensor would pick up the fact that this car is here and kind of adjust itself, but I'm going to keep going. You're going to keep going? I'm going to keep going. I'm going to see if it adjusts itself next to that Jeep. Carl, you stay over there and tell me if it gets too close to the car and you just scream if it does. So we are going to continue this. You're I know, I know. The sake of science. Yeah. Woo wee, that's close. <laughs> All right, you gotta have faith. I was trying to trick you a little bit. <laughs> Maybe. All right. It's straightened up though. It's here. It's here. Let's give that another shot though. It's coming out. All right, all right. It looks cleaner this time. Uh, stop going to the parking spots. Now, I feel like it's going to adjust. OK, yes, yeah, adjusting. It definitely ignores these parking spots, though. The lines. The lines. It, it would be great if it detected that. But you see, it just detected this car. And boom. Is it going to park? It was about to park. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need all that now. <laughs> so it looks like it's able to detect what it needs to and not hit any cars. But as the person controlling this thing, it's terrifying that it's ignoring these lines. Because as we drive, we pay attention to these lines and we don't cross them. So it is a little scary to see that, but at least it does the job. It's nerve wracking though. Okay guys, so we're doing the next test now. We're gonna have this thing back out of the spot. It's got a car next to it, so there's a bit more maneuvering here since it's gonna have to back out, come forward. Cars behind it, cars next to it. This should be a pretty big test. We got Carl on standby to make sure we don't hit anything. All right, come to me. All right. 
You know what? You just scared me. <laughs> and you made me let go. <laughs> okay, take two. All right, so it's coming out. Okay, okay. Now it's adjusting itself. Detect the car, please. Detect the Volkswagen. Okay. All right. Legitimate, and it's coming over to my side. Oh my gosh. It's doing the, it's, okay. All right, it's correcting itself. Nice. Hey. It looks like a teenager wearing Yeah, right? <laughs> but it did well. I like that. That was actually really good. For a car that did it by itself, I think it did great. All right, guys, so now we're going for the most dangerous test of them all. We are going to see what happens if someone walks in front of the car when it is coming out. Got my cousin Carl over there. He's our person at risk. So what's up, Carl? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we got insurance. It's all good. <laughs> but what we're going to do is have him walk out as the Tesla's pulling out. Thankfully, the Teslas come out pretty slowly. They go at like a mile per hour. So he should have enough time to like back up or move in case it doesn't stop. But I'll also be able to take my finger off of the button, stop the car in case it gets too close. So you ready to try this, cuzzo? Yeah. Yeah, you shook your head no. <laughs> Here we go. All right, Carl. <laughs> so that, that's a little bit of what I was worried about. It didn't stop at all. Didn't detect, it detect, it, he walked in front of it, didn't stop, but it was already turning. So I would say you'd, you'd have to have gotten in front of it a little bit earlier, but still, that doesn't matter. If it's coming out and it detects someone, like and someone gets in front of it that much, it should have stopped. Okay, so we're gonna try that again. The first one, even th like, the first one was bad because he got in front of it and it didn't stop. So we're gonna try this again, see if he gives it more space, what happens. Ready? Here we go. Faster call, faster. Let's, ah. Detected him with a little bit more space. Keep going, Carl. So it, it waited. All right, that one was better. That one was better for sure. So now let's give this a shot with Carl running in front of it. All right, ready? Ah, that took way too long. That took way, way too mm -hmm. Now we don't have another car to try and test that out with. So we're not gonna do that. Carl was our test dummy to see if obstacles would be something that would cause it to stop, but I don't know, man. Some funky results. Now, obviously guys, this isn't anything scientific. I'm sure Tesla has done their fair share of testing, but I mean, real world usage, you guys saw it. Now I will say, if we weren't testing and I saw someone walking down, I'd immediately let go of the button so that wouldn't be an issue. Uh, nobody would get hurt because I wouldn't allow the car to keep going. And I think anybody who uses this feature would have the same thought process. Uh, let me move this car out the way. But yeah, guys, like I was saying, I think anybody who's using this feature will have the same thought process where if they see someone or they see an object, they completely let go of it. Uh, but if you're planning to completely rely on the sensors and the cameras to do all of the thinking, you are absolutely wrong and you shouldn't do that. Cool stuff, it works, but you can't take out the human element. That is a huge part of taking control of this feature. Uh, but it's cool though, I like it. Scary. It's scary though. I'm probably gonna just show it off to people here and there, but I probably honestly wouldn't rely on it to have the car come to me when I get out of the mall. Now things that I would love to see in a future software update is more precision from Smart Summon. Uh, being able to detect the parking spot lines, like right here, if it didn't go past this, that would be awesome. I think that these make a straight enough line for it to detect a pattern that it could avoid. So that would be really cool. Something else that I think would be really helpful is maybe the app telling you what's a public road. Because honestly, I feel like this parking lot's open to the public. It feels like a public road to me, but maybe it's just a parking lot. But I would like some kind of identifier 
of where the car cannot be summoned to. But let me know what you guys think of the smart summon feature. If you've tried it yourself and you've got like a cool video or experiences with it, let me know in the comments down below and I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Till then it's your average consumer. Peace.